Let's turn now to some of the other top headlines this morning. Former President Donald Trump is officially pleading not guilty in the Fulton County election interference case. Trump's team entered his plea yesterday for the 13 felony charges he faces, including racketeering and conspiracy. The plea was entered in writing as they filed a waiver to tell the court that Trump would not appear in person for next week's scheduled arraignment. The former president's legal team is also pushing to separate his case from the other co-defendants. The filing argues that October 23rd is simply not enough time to prepare a defense. That date was set for the speedy trial of co-defendant Kenneth Cheesebro. DA Fawny Willis there in Fulton County asked a judge last week to set that date for the rest of the co-defendants as well. A judge yesterday also confirmed that there will be cameras in the courtroom. Hearings and proceedings related to the case will be televised and live streamed on the court's YouTube channel. Joining us now, NBC News legal analyst Andrew Weissman. Good morning, Andrew. Thanks for being with us. Um, no surprise at the former president's plea. No surprise that he's not going to make another trip to Georgia next week. But let's get your take on his uh, trying to separate himself uh, from some of his, of his co-defendants. And do you think, frankly, that his team has a point that a trial starting in seven or eight weeks, that simply isn't feasible? Uh, let's start with the, the last point, which is um, that is definitely a good argument that seven or eight weeks is insufficient time. We just had that issue uh, litigated in the D.C. federal case against Donald Trump. I know it can be hard to keep them all straight because you have the former president facing four separate cases. Um, three of them are set for trial right now. So we have a early March date. We have a end of March date and we have a May date for three of the cases. But Georgia is the one where there is not yet a date. Um, the people who want to go to trial soon have all raised their hand and said, we can do it. We'd like an early trial. So Donald Trump is not in that position. He basically wants to go to the back of the line um, and to have his trial, you know, after the election so that there, A, there's, it's never televised. B, he can continue to spin the facts and the law without actually being in a forum where a judge will actually determine that and a jury will actually determine it with, as you mentioned, cameras in the courtroom. And certainly good news about the cameras. So, Andrew, what would be your, your best sense then as to what is a realistic start date for this trial? One that Americans will be able to watch along, unlike the federal cases where there aren't cameras. You know, there's been a sense that, that state cases take a backseat to federal ones, that the DA would, would be deferential. She's not, at least not yet. Uh, what is a realistic time frame for the Trump portion of this Georgia trial? Well, we do have um, a data point to go with because this exact issue was argued back and forth between Jack Smith and Donald Trump in the federal D.C. case. And if you use that as a measure, um, there the federal judge um, essentially gave the former president seven months uh, to prepare, which is which is a significant amount of time. Uh, although, you know, obviously there are defendants who get more time, but there are also defendants who get less. And she estimated that that was something that is consistent with due process. So you could imagine um, the judge here in the state case using that as a bit of a benchmark. The biggest issue, I actually think, for the, the judge who sets this date is trying to slot it in. I mentioned that there are two criminal trials in in March. There's one in May. So, um, it, it, you know, figuring out exactly when this case can go to trial and the time period is, I actually think, going to be the biggest challenge for the judge, whether it's going to be before March or whether it's going to be after the May trial date uh, that is currently set for the so-called Mar-a-Lago documents case. Good morning, Andrew. Welcome to the fourth Good morning. hour. I hope we didn't get you up too early. No, you don't like to no, rise you know, too I'm, early. I, I'm upholding being an inveterate New Yorker and I rise late, but work late. 
<laughs> you, you do. You work very, as, yes. Watchers of uh, Lawrence's and Stephanie's show can show. No, we, <laughs> no, we know you work very late. Uh, we're about four or five months into tr Trump indictments, and I'm wondering, is, is, is there something that emerges, you know, like a, a larger thought that emerges for you about how Trump is handling this? Um, or you know, or how the or how the system is working, you know, because we're, we're we're a little bit into it now. Do you have any larger perspectives as you think about? Because I know you think about this all the time. Uh, I do. Um, I I think that the biggest issue that I see looming is really has to do with cameras in the courtroom. Um, you know, this is one where. Obviously, for the first time in our history, we have a former president um, being charged. And it is correct for people to be concerned about making sure that this is not um, a show trial. We're not a banana republic. And I think the way to cut through that is to follow the model of the January 6 hearings, to follow the model to date myself of the Watergate hearings. Um, and so this is one reason I think the Georgia case is so significant. It's not so much that the Georgia case um, is one that the whoever is the next president cannot pardon their way out of this case because it's a state case. Federal pardons don't apply there. But I think the bigger import is I think it's really important for the public, whichever way the trial goes, whether it's a conviction, a hung jury or an acquittal, that everyone gets to see it because we have such a huge problem now with disinformation and mistrust uh, in the electorate. I'm sort of veering into your lane, um, Jen, but I think that is the real issue here is making sure that the court of public opinion gets to see what's going on. So I think that's going to be really important for people watching all four of these cases to really keep their eye on Georgia and whether the case stays in the Georgia state court. NBC News legal analyst Andrew Weissman, we're happy to hear from him at any hour of the day. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, let's